Hey everybody, Alex here. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Two Weeks One Shot, a tabletop RPG variety podcast. You have now arrived at episode six of season two. Please make sure your arms and legs stay securely fastened within the vehicle as there will be a lot of twists and turns this episode and we are not liable for any injuries. We're back in the case of the empty cradle and we're just piling mysteries on top of mysteries on top of more mysteries. It's a great time for a working detective to file for overtime. Too bad the crew at the Frank Darling Detective Agency aren't being paid by the hour. Or at all, probably. So grab onto your magnifying glasses and put on your deer hunting hats, because you're probably already a better detective than any of us will ever be. And let's get on with the adventure. Previously on Two Weeks, One Shot. New Fandom. A city where they'll kill you before they look at you. But that kind of place is good for business when you're a private eye. It is I, Jeff, the man of 101 faces. Hello, Hobson Wolf, at your service. If you don't know where my daughter is, I'd like for you to point me in the direction to someone who might know where my daughter is. I'm here to crack some skulls and some secrets. I'm Frank Darl, the boss. Shylock and his kid have both disappeared. The baby's gone? Yes, yes, yes. My grandson, he's gone. Does he often send messages to a colleague? An old friend? There was a man he used to communicate with. An enemy. Montgomery. Montgomery died. I got an idea. I think the best place to go to would be the junkyard. If you vouch for these clowns, I'll let you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll vouch for him. It's Kim, my daughter. Oh my god, it's my daughter! Dad? Hello, Buttercup. I was never kidnapped! You were taken. Where are my sisters right now? In this bag of holding. That's right! Frosty Jeff, you don't happen to know ragtime, do you? All of a sudden, the lights go off, and from behind the dressing room door, we hear a... <coughs> what has happened to my daughter? I would like to go, uh, I'm picking up Trusty Jeff's accent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's contagious. Um, I would like to see what's up with the room with the screams and make sure everything's okay there. As I scramble off the stool and pitter patter my way over. All right, that would be the, uh, the dressing room. Oh no, I'm there already. I never left. <laughs> I'm still standing there, perplexed, waiting waiting for my daughter's return. Do you open the door, Grotank? Oh, I do, I do. All right. You open the door, and within is an empty dressing room. Oh, no. There's a window in the back, and it seems to be open. My daughter. It seems. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually been taken. <laughs> 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 <For the first time>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What a new experience for you. This is it's never happened before. <laughs> I turned to my friends and this time you won't see it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have much experience with this sort of thing? I am not delusional about this. She is absolutely not here in this room. And she does not seem like she left on her own accord. <laughs> I'm not convinced that you didn't somehow have something to do with it, but that does seem to be the case. Mm. Check for a ladder. <laughs> Always a ladder. Uh, is, is, yeah, is the window big enough? Well, I guess it would be. Can we go through the window? The window is, uh, is yeah, anyone can fit through the window. It's a, it's a pretty large, regular-sized window. Is there a ladder outside the window? Uh, 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 you look outside the window, and it's on ground level. And you just see mounds and mounds of like junk and trash, you know. So you look out, you can see like a little path, and you can see like those that collection of garbage and like the walkway, but you don't see anybody there. Okay, Mr. Wolf, I do want to confirm 
Would a gnome be able to enter this window without the use of a ladder? <laughs> there is no ladder. <laughs> I'm not strictly familiar with their height and capabilities. Um, can I roll an investigation in my, in my investigation perception? One of those two? Uh, you have to be, I think, let's do this. If it's investigation, it's because you're being, you're specifically investigating an object or something. Mm -hmm. If it's perception, it's just tell me like what I'm looking at or do I see, perceive anything extra? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking around the room. I'm like trying to see if there's anything there. Any markings on the walls, any explosions, any knives, any scratches from claws. 17, I rolled a 17. Uh, you rolled a 17? Uh, y you do see that there is, uh, the room looks uh, typical. There's some clothes on the floor. Clothes on the floor. Uh, and a, uh, a duffel bag, a small duffel bag uh, that is, uh, that it was never zipped up. Mm. Small duffel bag. I go over to the duffel bag. I kick it. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be sure there's not like a gnome or a goblin in there. No, no, he's <laughs> onto something. This is what he did in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Let the man work. <laughs> I put a hand up. I, I hold off my friends. Wait, this sign, this one is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, nothing comes out of it. Um, I do, uh, um, not sure why darling and hired him. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> what else do I see in the room? It's, it's, I see the, I see the duffel bag. What else? Uh, you see, uh, when you look around the room, basically see a vanity with a bunch of, with a bunch of, uh, light bulbs. Okay. They're on, there's a window that is open. Oh no. Uh, and, uh, there's some, like, chairs, there's, like, a sofa. Um, it's your typical actor green room. Love it. What kind of snacks? What was she eating? Like almonds or she using as candy? And <laughs> no, and no, she was definitely eating almonds. Nice. Yeah. Classy. Yeah, yeah, Classy. yeah. Classy. Yeah. I'm so proud of her. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, <laughs> I'm going to do an investigation now. <clears throat> oh. In particular. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the window and look outside the window see perhaps if there's a man standing there with my daughter in a sack. <laughs> <laughs> While he does that, I'll check out the duffel bag that he has ignored since <laughs> kicking it. Yeah. No, wait, I was going to check the duffel bag. Wait, no, I was just, now that I'm sure that there's no goblin in there, I was fine. I was going to move on. Uh, well, roll, uh, roll your investigation to uh, see if you can glean anything from the window. Glean anything from the window. Uh, I rolled a... I, I got 12. That's a 12. Okay, you look at the window and you can't really uh, determine anything from it. I can't even see out this window. I go back to the duffel bag. You can see out the window. It just leads to the same junkyard from before, but you don't notice any marks or any tracks or any scuffling, anything like that. I don't notice any marks and tracks or any scuffling. Mm -hmm. I go back to the duffel bag. I give it another kick. I look inside. <laughs> uh, you gave it another kick? Um, don't kick that while I'm holding it, please. You kick it out of his hands. Oh good, I grab it. Why did you- why? Why did- I know my you're distraught scene. that your daughter was actually taken, but why <laughs> would you do that? Don't you see it? I'm on a mission. And the duffel bag explodes with clothing and roses. Wow. Interesting. Roses and clothing, what, what two strange things to put in the same bag. You, <laughs> you would think they would be crushed by each other. What type of clothing? What type of roses? Yes, <laughs> what type of roses and what type of clothing? Uh, the clothing is the clothes she was wearing when you saw her. Hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah. Interesting. So she's either naked or wearing something else. And the roses are just roses. And the roses are, uh, they were clearly tied together in a bouquet. But when the kick occurred, they fell apart. Yeah, you kind of ruined the bouquet. Can I look around if there's a note on the roses? Uh, you, you can. Um, you, uh, roll a d20 to see if you can find it. Uh, sure. Can I perceive it? Perceive it? <laughs> Perception. <laughs> or do I, is it investigation? Can you intimidate it? No, that's my, that's what I do. Okay, move on. So I'm looking around a general room, but I'm looking for a specific thing. What is it? Try a history check. Investigation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, investigation is usually what it's going to be for, like, specifically looking for, like, a clue or something. Uh, 18. 18, you say? Yeah. All right. Uh, you do find a, a note. Oh, no. Um, and it just, uh, it basically is, uh, it's a little envelope. 
Uh, it has like a little heart bearing, uh, a little sticker. Uh, you open it, and on the note, it just says, See you tonight. Love, M A. Oh, no. Love, Ma. <laughs> Is it my wife? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said she was dead. <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently she left you. We are learning more and more <laughs> things that our compatriot here has thought for many years that are not true, apparently. I'm so perplexed by all of this. Maybe one of us should hold that bag of holding. <laughs> no. Just for safekeeping. Do you touch the bag of holding? No. Maybe one of us should look in the bag of no. holding. I pull out my crossbows. No one touches the bag of holding. I would be remiss to point out that... M.A. also could stand for Montgomery Adams, who we already suspect to be the culprit. Montgomery Adams was not my ex-wife. I mean, my dead wife. I'm a widower. Are you sure about that? I keep forgetting. I'm so confused about my own history now. You see, yes, you seem to be rather perplexed. I don't remember playing this character in any of my movies. If you would <laughs> kindly lower your crossbows while we debate this, I don't think any of us are trying to touch the bag of holding <laughs> right now. It's all right, breathe. Breathe. There you go. <laughs> we have a few options. No, all the way, thank you. Lower them all the way down. There we go. That's good. I, I, I gently, gently coddle the bag of holding from the bottom. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> it's all right, my daughter. I'll protect you. M moving on from that, I, I think Mr. Wolf has, has a good idea here. M.A. Montgomery Ward, Adam. Adams. Yeah, yes. I like I like that idea, and he lines up with what we already know. I think bartender, where where is the guy? Where is the no? We sang your song. We did your dance. Not literally the dance, but quite literally, we sang your little song. So I am accepting tips. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about tips, but. Sure. Yeah, I'll... You did, you did good. You did good. And I'll tell you what, kid, I don't know what you're doing on Monday night, but I actually have an open slot at 9 o'clock. Uh, if you want to make a couple of bucks, come on back. Uh, oh yeah. We might have permanent open slots if you don't tell us what we need to know right now. Okay, okay. What, uh, what are you asking me exactly? I pull out my crossbows. Where's my daughter? It's a niece and no. Whoa. <laughs> your daughter? I don't even. What are you talking about, your daughter? I don't know. I, I don't even know who your daughter Where is. Where is Montgomery Adam? Montgomery Adam. And the Adams. singer. The singer that you were so keen on. Oh, Kim. Or any other gnome that frequents this establishment. Well, yeah, but you don't want to mess with them. They're dangerous. That is precisely who we would like to uh, mess with, as you say. All right. I have had a long history of dealing with dangerous people. I do not fear any gnome. All right, well, you might change your mind once you learn they're a part of the Farian Brotherhood. They're a group of gnomes and goblins and elves that believe that the only pure race is the fairy race. And all of them hang together. Their lair is in Tiny Treasure's toy shop. I'd be careful if I were you, but if you want to find yourself some gnomes, that'd probably be the place. That's horrifying. Absolutely horrifying. And this coming from the man who has girls in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Do you touch the bag? Do you touch it? Do you open Don't it? it. <laughs> Leave my daughters alone. Oh, we shall. We're going to deal with this bag at some point, but <laughs> for right now, I agree. I am troubled by these revelations of racist gnomes walking our streets. <laughs> Kidnapping our babies. Kidnapping our women. It's horrifying. Absolutely horrifying. I expected this sort of behavior from goblins, but from gnomes. This is getting into some very dangerous territory if we ever want to actually market what we're doing and talking about here. The Farian Brotherhood. How topical. <laughs> Good lord. Say it again. Say it one more time. I really want... I re yeah, let me, let me really... Uh, let me really... Hear the, hear the drawl in that one. <laughs> Fairy. <laughs> we, we might want to change at least the name of this organization. <laughs> they believe in the superiority of the Farian race. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> They're fairy folk. 
<laughs> That's what we're doing now. Going around putting daughters in bags that we didn't want them to be in, but we want them in other bags. Yeah. Can you believe it? In the span of what? One and one hour and 15 minutes, we've gone from 401ks to the fairy and brother. Uh, this is going well. Oh, well, now this way now I have a lead on where my daughter is and everything else. The more you talk about your daughter, the more uncomfortable I get. We're going to have a serious talk about that bag once we're done. But after I find my daughter. We seem to know where three of them are. <laughs> Possibly your wife. A an indeterminate number of daughters and other women will be saved by the end of this. But for right now, it sounds like we need to make it to tiny, tiny tots, terrible treasure trove. Shop. I don't. I already forget. It was a lot of alliteration. Yes. Where is this toy shop? This the toy shop. It's in. It's inside of town. You gotta go a little bit further. It's not too far from here. It's the old derelict building at the edge of town. <laughs> a derelict toy shop. Yeah. If you stick on this street and head east. You can't miss it. All right. Somebody get the boss and tell him where we're going. I feel like I should shoot the bartender. <laughs> No, don't shoot the bartender. Uh, I think I should shoot the bartender. He has done nothing wrong to us, and we don't need to start a barroom brawl here right now. Uh, fine. But if I find out you knew anything about my daughter being kidnapped today, I will come back, and I will probably have a different accent when I do. <laughs> Miss Denise, <laughs> you're in a unique position where someone actually has taken your daughter, and thus you have someone to shoot. Let's us go. Every bolt you don't shoot here is a bolt you can shoot when we deal with the Farian Brotherhood. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, I hope we shoot the Farian Brotherhood and don't come to any kind of agreement of them or try to curry their support in any way. I think we're going to have a very staunch and open stance on our uh, dealings <laughs> with the, the Farian Brotherhood and leave it. Mm. There will be no chance for anyone to wonder about how we feel about them. Yes. I think we should all be very clear on our stance on the Farian Brotherhood at this moment <laughs> in the podcast. And how we oppose them. All right. At no point should anyone say, let's go kill some fairies. <laughs> okay? Let's not do that. Ground rules. Yeah, let's, let's tread carefully. I think in this context, we'll be fine. <laughs> you look around and indeed you see a Frank Darling... Uh, your boss, all of you have been uh, convening, trying to crack the case, but Frank Darling is sitting uh, in the uh, corner table and he seems to be involved in a card game. So, boss, I think we've got an update and possibly a new case of missing daughters in a bag. Now I definitely need to find my daughter. We found three of them, uh, but that might be a different case. We've got a lead. All right, then, boys. Where should we go to next? Tiny Tim's Toy Shop. Uh, ter terrible Tuesday Toy Shop. Something about special pieces, tiny parts. Put the tiny part toy shop. <laughs> t t tiny. Eeny, tiny. Treasures, pro tiny secret treasures. Who's good with the names? Who on our team is good with the names? I'm distracted by the the lack of daughters. <laughs> All right then, <laughs> maybe we should just make our way there. I happen to know exactly where the tiny treasures toy shop is. That's the one. That's that's what it was. Who told you that name? I happen to have two ears and can hear you from here. You're very loud. This is probably why we don't have a 401k. It's a very powerful whisper I've been doing this entire time. So shall we go? Unless there's any other sort of business you all have to finish up. Well, there is the business of benefits, boss. <laughs> all right, then. Let's go. <laughs> I believe I'm considered a contractor. You know, I scheduled an HR meeting with him, and he just kept going on to the next case. <laughs> We have HR? We left the Time's Up Tavern and made our way to the Tiny Treasures Toy Shop. Is it just me, or is it all a little bit of alliteration in this game? We had arrived at what appeared to be some kind of storefront. It was decrepit. It was old. And the exterior of the building had a front door and a big window showing off whatever toys they had back then. 
There's a large nutcracker standing against the wall. I looked at the boys and wondered what the next move was. Anybody got any nuts? I say we interrogate the nutcracker <laughs> and break the window. Uh, a look around should be a good idea for sure. Lou, I'm going to need your arms. All right. Like to pick you up or to break something? Uh, a little of both. You say the word. Um, I guess I'm, we're going to wander towards the front and the windows. Take a look. Okay. You look through the glass and basically you see that there's a bunch of old toys. It's kind of dark in there. Difficult to see. There is a front door to the right of the nutcracker. And uh, it all looks pretty dilapidated and decrepit. I'll give the door a try. Okay. The door is locked. Smart. I'll give the door a try with my trusty thieves tools. All right. Roll your d20 plus your, uh, you know the one, the one to break into things. Your, your dexterity check. Well, which, well, which one? What, do you want me to use strength or dexterity? Because uh, No, uh, if you're going to use thieves tools, you got to use, there's actually a specific. Well, yeah, there's the proficiency for thieves tools, but it doesn't say like tools don't have a strict like ability score attached to them. Then do dex. So, all right. All right. Don't fail me now. Using strength with your thieves tools, just punching the knob over and over again. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I assume it would be like breaking it off. <laughs> uh, well, that's not great. I rolled a total of seven. Awesome. Because it is a one on the die, so that's that's wonderful. As you're using the thieves tools, his trusty thieves, to uh, the trusty thieves tools to open the door, you end up uh, breaking one of the uh, cheap, shoddy uh, tools that you have. Clearly, it was uh, it was. Poorly manufactured in some far off sweatshop. Yeah. Blame the foreigners. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Come on. Yeah. I only buy my thieves tools from close by sweatshops. Sounding like the fairy and brotherhood over there. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. It's our economic system. That's the problem. Is there uh, another way around? Is there an alley or are we on the corner? I'd like to do an investigation of the nutcracker and do a search for it. its hidden key. So to answer, you look around and there seems to be no other uh, entrance that you can see. Uh, there is an alley to the right. Uh, you can choose to go down the alley uh, if you so wish. It is dark, though. Do you have night vision? Uh, no. Okay. Then it is just dark. But perhaps Lu Fang does. I don't know. Does Lu Fang have dark vision? I, I don't think I do. I'm pretty sure shifters do not have dark vision. But I will check and get back to you on that real quick. Do we have a torch? And uh, let's see here. Uh, I believe that was Grotank. Grotank, you wanted to uh, check the nutcracker? Yes, I wanted to check the nutcracker everywhere, even in those nutcrackers. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to roll an investigation because that's specifically, I'm looking specifically for a key, correct? Uh, I don't know. Are you? Is that what you're looking for? Yes, and <laughs> since I'm looking specifically for a thing... Then yes, that would be investigation. Okay. We're learning as we go, okay. Okay, roll your d20 plus your investigation. We're all really good at this game. It only took us to the last session. Here we go. Super good. I rolled an 11 plus 6. That would be a 17 for our listeners who can't do math. And podcast members. <laughs> You thoroughly investigate the nutcracker and uh, all you can really sort of see is that there is no key on said nutcracker. Yeah. Uh, it's clearly a, uh, a festive seasonal uh, decoration that the uh, shopkeeper must have put out a while back ago. Um, but you do see that there are ways to like, uh, you can like move, the, the head clearly can swivel. The arms can clearly like slightly move forward mm -hmm. and little grooves for like the legs to move forward. But it just seems to be a regular old nutcracker that you can position. I hate Christmas. It's a stupid holiday. Is this just a, a one story building? It is, one it is okay. just a one story building. Well, as far as the alley goes, Lu Fang does in fact have dark vision being a shifter. Ooh. And so uh, he is able to see uh, about 60 feet uh, in dim lighting and shadow as though it were more of like bright light that you can actually see through. Lou, Lou, let's check around back. You look down the uh, alleyway. Oh, well, roll your d20 for your perception. Let's see what you see. Oh yeah, let me uh, let me roll perception. How good am I at that? Not the worst. Not awful. Not the best. 
Not the best, but not the worst. And I think I rolled better. Quantify me your your ability to see. I would say that if I were to rate it on a scale of one to anything, it would be a 19. Ooh la la. You look down the alley and uh, you can see a... While the alley itself is your typical alley, you see a couple of like rats running around. There's definitely some like garbage, uh, uh, some like dumpsters and stuff like that. There are some... Uh, there's some gutters that seem to go along the side of the building. Mm. You know what I mean? Like the rain gutters, those like... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I never clean those. Do they look like they would be potentially like climbable? Yeah, they do look like they would be potentially climbable. Hey, boss. And Mr. Wolf. Yes. Uh, and everybody, I suppose. This is pertinent information for everyone. If I am... My eyes do not mislead me. I see some gutters that look like, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, you could shimmy up them if you wanted to. Try and get onto the rooftop there or see if there's a way in through the ceiling. I say we send the little one with a bit of my rope up the chute. I could give it a go. If you want, I can toss you. Toss him. Toss him. Toss him. I'm not sure that I could catch myself. <laughs> Do you have toss the halfling? Uh, so if, if, if there's going to be an attempt to throw, I want you to use... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask that uh, Lu Fang use his... his strength to throw hell yeah let's do it uh how much do you weigh hops uh, that's a good question uh, i'm sorry you need more than 30 pounds of it i wrote it down somewhere as a halfling yeah probably not all that much not a lot it's like a like a small yorkshire terrier well he's not a gnome so which is the <laughs> average for halflings is it like 50 i want to say it's even less than that i want to say it's more like 30 or 35 let's go with 40 pounds there's a really upset listener right now you're like yeah, exactly yeah he's he's horrified I'm like wow wow sending us an email right now just assuming excuse me you do not understand the weight issues that befall the halfling race oh wait though <laughs> halflings are uh they do weigh about 40 pounds according to the player's handbook so wow Wow. Yeah. Frank, in with the in with the hot knowledge. See, leave us alone, Internet. We're good. You know, he's very used to, like, picking me up, so, you know. This is why we don't get the 401k. <laughs> <laughs> because I weigh 40 pounds. <laughs> yeah, it's all your fault. So, Lu Fang, go ahead and roll your uh, roll your strength. All right. Uh, and you've got to do a, uh, you got to beat a 14. Hey, give me the end of the rope. Hey, is there any chance that I could persuade you to let me add my proficiency in athletics to this roll, being that it's a sort of athletic heaving of the half? <laughs> roll for persuasion. <laughs> I will allow it. You're going to, you're going to, how, how would you throw him? How would you throw him to make it more of a, uh... Yeah, so, so Lou uh, doesn't share this information often, but... Back in high school, he was on the track and field team <laughs> as, as the shot put. He was on the Hobbit team, uh, and so he does. He yeah. does. Uh, he gets. He, he gets in position with uh, Hobson, you know, holding holding onto one end of the rope, and he, he sort of heaves him up with both hands, like onto his shoulder, and then he, he does like the step, step, step forward, and just full body twist with the throw, with the power shot from the wow. arm. Is it a one? Is it a one? And uh, we get a total of. 21 okay. nice. as, he, as he just full body thrusts Hobson into the air, sailing up towards this rooftop. Wow. <laughs> Not to be that guy, but with all the effort being put into getting inside the toy store, we probably could have just busted the door open. All right, let's do some Two's Cast housekeeping. First of all, if you're busy like me, taking the time to sit down and read a book is becoming less and less available. So a great solution for that is Audible. Audible allows you to listen to your favorite novels, short stories, books, and collections of podcasts on the go to make time for you to be able to digest some good reads through your ear holes. I've actually been listening to A Scanner Darkly by Philip K. Dick, read by the one and only Paul Giamatti. It's a fantastic listen, and I highly recommend it. If you're interested in getting a free trial to Audible, use our link, audibletrial.com slash twoscast. That's audibletrial.com slash T-W-O-S cast, and you'll get a free trial to Audible, and you'll also be supporting the podcast, which is greatly appreciated. 
We'd like to give a huge thank you to Frank Rodriguez, actor extraordinaire, but still mostly inferior Rodriguez brother, for joining us on the podcast and and trying to wrangle this madness that we do uh, quite effectively, I believe. So thank you so much, big brother. Always appreciated and always happy to have you on the show. Big thank you also to Roll Music for providing our awesome intro song titled The River and to Kevin McLeod, I pronounced it correctly this time, for the song's covert affair, Faster Does It, I Knew a Guy, Intractable, Spyglass, and Ultra Lounge, which are played throughout the episode, and to the contributors at freesound.org for some of the sound effects and ambient noises you're hearing throughout the episode, which are just mwah, amazing. Be sure to check the show notes for more info and links to all the music in the episode. If you'd like to support the show, you can visit patreon.com slash twoscast. That's T-W-O-S cast. I'm going to spell that out every time I say it. And for just $2 a month, you can help us towards our goal of hiring an editor. For more of us here at Twoscast, check us out on Twitter. Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and YouTube. Just search Twoscast. That's T W O S Cast. See, I told you I'd spell it. And use hashtag Twoscast to say hello. To hear the show, head over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or even Google Podcasts. If you're listening on Spotify or Podbean, follow us to be notified when episodes come out. And hey, while you're at it, go ahead and rate our podcast on Spotify or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Either or is appreciated or both, even better. We don't advertise the show at all right now, so honestly, positive ratings and word of mouth and sharing the show are our most powerful tools to help the show grow. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Make sure you get your earbuds back in their ear seats next Tuesday, May 10, for another episode of Two's Talks. It's about as dumb as they've all been, which is a good thing, right? Then the week after, on Tuesday, May 17, we're going to be continuing our adventure in the case of the empty cradle with the effervescent Frank Rodriguez at the helm. Okay, I know I said we could have probably just broken the door down, but honestly, that's just not our brand. Now, shot putting a gnome onto a roof, though, that's totally our brand. So does the throw dictate the landing? Like, just because you have a good throw doesn't mean... Right, and that's a good point. So, yes. so you've made it onto the... You've, you've made it to the height of the roof. And as you are approaching it, let's see how well you uh, nail the landing, hop. Mm-hmm. So yeah. using your acrobatics... Oh, boy. Um, go ahead and we'll, we'll make it relatively simple for you since you're use, used to it. Uh, mm-hmm. Go ahead and beat a 12 to see how you stick the uh, landing. We do this a lot, so... Do it all the time. Everybody needs a friend you can toss. Did I mention I didn't build a dex robe? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, God. I rolled a two, uh, so that's a four total. <laughs> wow. No, no, you don't have acrobatics as a skill? I didn't build a dex robe. <laughs> you know what? That's that's fair. No, that's, a, that's an answer. I built an investigative rogue. I was like, everyone else could do that. <laughs> <laughs> so when Lu Fang throws Hobson Wolf. It is a uh, a perfect throw, except for the fact that there seems to be some centrifugal force acting upon uh, poor Hobson, and he begins spinning, his legs going uh, past his head, and he just kind of keeps turning until finally he makes it all the way on top of the roof and lands firmly flat on his face with his uh, <laughs> legs. Uh, 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 over the other side of his body. So he's just kind of uh, half prone, legs overhead. Uh, and roll a 1d4 for damage. I'm sorry, Mr. Wolf. I, with the, you know, the shot put, you put the top spin so it goes farther, it gets the rotation. I'm, I, I, I didn't think about it. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I had a one, one point of damage there for the record. Okay, perfect. So go ahead and knock that down. Um, Just enough to hurt your pride. Uh, yeah. So, is there something I can affix this rope to? Uh, there, uh, when you well roll your d twenty plus your perception. Yes, I shall. All right, that's gonna be uh thirty two. Oh wow! <laughs> that's where your points went. 
Yeah. You look around that roof and you are able to see everything. There seems to be like uh, some sort of like a pipe that's sticking out. There also seems to be like what is like a large industrial fan that is pointing down near the entrance. Clearly, uh, the toy shop would get warm during the summer. And uh, aside from that, you can easily tie the rope to uh, to the pipe that sticks out for uh, the fan exhaust. Yeah, awesome. I'm gonna tie the rope up uh, best I can. All right, I've tied it to a pipe up here. There might be a way up. And anyone that's thinking about climbing onto the top of the uh, toy shop, go ahead and roll their uh, acrobatics. Uh, with, and you, all you gotta do is beat a 10. Can I roll my athletics instead? Uh, sure. Sure. Athletics. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Not a- acrobatics. Sorry. Athletics. Okay. Oh, can I roll acrobatics? My athletics is poopy. <laughs> athletics is about pulling yourself up. I think that might be better. Here, I'll, I'll aid Trusty Jeff. Beautiful. Trusty Jeff, you advantage. Trusty Jeff, I can throw you too if you want. Okay, I'll, give you the, I'll give you the stirrups. You plant your foot here. I'll heave up. You jump up. It'll be beautiful. Trusty Jeff's a fan of big air. I was part of the rope climbing team back in college. I rolled a 12, so old, old fat grow tank to his sweet ass time. <laughs> but he made his way up there. My daughter's not up here. How many, uh, how many jump cut edits did we have while he was climbing that rope? <laughs> There's a whole <laughs> montage happening of him, like, yeah. of him, like, looking at the rope and, like, you know, brushing the sweat off the side <laughs> and, like, one arm, then the next arm, then like the legs flailing. Yeah, every single motion is its own camera exactly. angle. And that is only the first foot of rope. Yeah. <laughs> Just the, all the wheezing old man smells. Yeah. Uh, I got a net 20. Nice. Lovely. Ah, there you go. So while uh, while Grotank is slowly climbing this rope, trusty Jeff with the assistance of Lu Fang basically like climbs past him and even uses Grotank's like back and climbs on top of his back and then <laughs> grabs the rope above Grow Tank and like places his foot on Grow Tank's shoulder and pushes up until he's at the top of the roof. All with ease. The future is now, old man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn Gen Z's. Apparently, uh, as that happens, though, after Lou helps him up, he then grunts uh, and blows out his shoulder. Oh, God. Because uh, I got another <laughs> nat one for a total of nine. So Lou, he like starts to grab the rope and pull himself up. And he just immediately is like, nope, nope, I'm going to. You guys are going to let me in. You, you, you. <laughs> we'll open the door for you, you fat bastard. You, you find the way in and unlock the door and I'll, I'll come around. I'll wait with the boss. I'll make sure he's safe out on the street here. You guys, <laughs> you guys go in. You turn around and Frank Darling uh, is in the background and he seems to be hailing a cab. And he's like, boys, I'll be right back. I left my wallet. Back at the tavern. I'll be, <laughs> give me two minutes. You guys go inside and do the crime thing. I'll be right back. God, this is quite the case. Uh, all right, boss. Did the boss just allow us to do crime? I'm not paying his bail this time. He, every time he goes off and on a bender and then one <laughs> of us has to pick him up. I'm not, I'm just, it's not coming out of my pay this time. Is anyone ever concerned about the fact that our boss, ostensibly the lead detective of this agency, <laughs> Never seems to be around to do any of the actual detecting. I'll wait out front. You guys let me in. Well, the four of you, or the three of you are on the roof. Uh, eventually, Grow Tank, like, you know, his arms come up to the, to the, to the, to the roof, and he, like, pushes himself over. And, uh, you know, his, like, fat gut gets on top, and that, like, braces him so he can finally, like, push his legs up and come to a, uh, come to a stand. Oh, I'm just as limber as I was back in 1982 when I was a heartthrob in Hollywood. <laughs> Don't look at me right now. Hold on, was Liam Neeson a heartthrob in 1982? <laughs> I could only assume he was sexy as fuck. He was a heartthrob at some point, I think. I, was he? I think so. Okay, okay. I mean, he had to be. Yeah, someone, Google. <laughs> someone type in 1982, Liam Neeson. Let me know what comes up. Oh, God. We'll save it for the Patreon. Hey, That's sign it. up for our Patreon. Don't, or just tweet at us your best 1982 Liam Neeson picture. And uh, send us yeah. some money on Venmo if you want. Also, that'd be great. Um, or just, like, direct it to me. That'd be nice. Because I'm 
I'm hurting, guys. Times are tough. Back to the game. Okay, so what would you all like to do? I guess we want to take a look at that fan. I'm assuming mm. it's not working because this place is old. It's not working. Nice. So is there enough space for uh, me or all of us to slip uh, down there? There is enough uh, space for a, uh, 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 a Hobson wolf to uh, crawl between the blades. Yes. All right. Well, uh, in that case, I'm going to pull the rope up from the, the side of the building, keep it attached to the pipe, and throw it down the fan. Okay, beautiful. Uh, and that is exactly what you do. You uh, slide the rope from between the blades of the fan, and uh, you are able to climb through. Do, you all, do the rest of you follow suit? Do we fit? Do we fit in the hole? Uh, you do not. I mean, trusty Jeff keeps a... Very nice figure, but I don't know. Uh, I, I don't believe trusty Jeff and Grotank can fit between the blades of this fan. Yeah. Grotank would like to uh, redeem himself and you do a strength check and try to break one of the fan blades off to fit his large posterior. I love it. I'm going to unlock the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, why are we on the roof? Okay, so we'll go back to you, uh, Hobson Wolf. Uh, you land and it is far too dark. Far too dark in this uh, toy shop, but you can see the strange outlines of standing figures uh, and moving uh, toys and dolls everywhere. Um, roll the d20 uh, plus your perception. You don't have dark vision though, right? Uh, no. All right. Roll your d20 plus your perception to see if you can find the front door. 20. Oh, wow. Uh, you immediately land and you like reach out your left hand absently saying to yourself and the front door should be here. And sure enough, it is there. You uh, turn the knob and uh, a sliver of light pours in. Um, let me take it to uh, let me take it to grow tank grow tank. You're attempting to break the uh, blade of the fan. Uh, give me your D20 plus your strength. Why, of course. Because after I climbed all the way up here, the fuck am I climbing back down? Okay. Ooh, it's a natural 20. Oh, nice. You, uh, you begin kicking the fan blade. Yes, back to my kicking. <laughs> back to your, your, your sturdy kicking, and, uh, the fan just, uh, collapses down, <laughs> making a, uh, large opening for both you and trusty Jeff to go down. You can see a small sliver of light pouring in from what is clearly an open front door. I, I indicate to the old trusty Jeff, after you, old friend. Beauty before age, I see. <laughs> now watch you standing on my head again, you little bastard. Anyway, down I go. Down. <laughs> Wee. Uh, roll a d20 athletics. Alex, just beat a 10. <laughs> okay, that's harder than it sounds. Because <laughs> I got a seven. Nice. You grab onto the rope and uh, <laughs> you go down it and like you get rope burned and immediately you let go and you, uh, let's see, roll a D20 uh, Hobson Wolf to see where you're standing. Oh, no. Nat 20. Nice. Immediately to your right, not on you, immediately to your right. You see the uh, the large uh, the large body of a what is clearly a, maybe possibly a sixty five year old man uh, land beside you, and if he's not sixty five and really is in his low forties, he is aged poorly. Um, <laughs> and uh, he comes down with a thud. My beautiful hands <laughs> and my beautiful ass. Yes. <laughs> oh. Roll 1d4. Roll 1d4, please, trusty Jeff. That's a three. It's a three. Take three damage. Uh, Hobson continues to pull the door open for uh, Lou and just says, well, the door's open. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank, thank you. With Jeff on the floor behind him. Trusty Jeff, what are you doing? Lying down on the job, I see. Taking a miniature sabbatical. Grow tank, you want to try coming down? Yeah. Quick athletics over here. Oop, I rolled uh, some total of an 18. I'm getting out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, uh, despite it being difficult for you to go up a set of rope, you uh, very naturally are good at going down uh, a uh, piece of rope. Me and gravity are old friends. That's exactly it. And a romance is rekindled. <laughs> and uh, when you come in, the light from the hole above and the light from the front door is enough to illuminate this room. 
My God. And it is a room just filled with old toys. Everywhere that the, you you look, um, there are uh, there are just you know toys. Not that you should be expecting anything. Um, and all of them have these strange, uh, empty looks on them. Like a doll's eyes? Like a doll's eyes. Like a doll's eyes. Like, like pieces of capitalist trash. Yeah. Or that. Just like that. You notice that some of the dolls, uh, seem to be on, uh, small pedestals, uh, that allow them to rotate. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. Like, they're, like, clearly on these, like, little platforms to be shown off. Um, but they're, like, attached to the platforms. Can I roll an investigation to see if it looks like, aside from our movement, if there's been any movement through this store interior? Uh, yes, indeed. You can. Cool. That is a nine. All right. <laughs> you, uh, look around and, uh... You can see that everything is covered with dust and there seem to be some like set of footprints that lead from the front door to exactly where uh, Lou Dobbs is. Lou Dobbs. <laughs> How dare you? Or Lou Fang, not Lou Dobbs. I was going to say, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I hope our audience doesn't know who that is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> uh, it seems to be some sort of Dust man making his way through this whole store, hmm. leaving dust everywhere. Dust man, you see. Um, <laughs> could be that. <laughs> well, do you think we should like do something about it? We're not here on a cleanup job. Kill the dust. <laughs> no. Um. Does it look like a dust gnome? I said, man. Uh, <laughs> no. Whoa. All right. I'm glad that we're coming down uh, staunch on our feelings about gnomes. Yes, uh, I'm. I want to. I want to. I, I want to look at one of the pedestals. I want to move one of the pedestals. I really, really want. Okay, so roll your uh, d20 investigation on one of the pedestals. Oh, I could use that die. Hey, this one's this one's a winner. Twenty three. Okay, excellent. You find. Uh, inscribed into what is clearly a Raggedy Leanne doll. Mm. Uh, at the uh, pedestal is the uh, following phrase. Feel free to read it aloud for our audience. A man who gets sick with ease, ignores every cough and each wheeze. He'll moan and he'll cry and say please. But in the end, he'll die of disease. And in the moment that you say that aloud, the uh, front door slams closed, and uh, the uh, the dolls, their mouths pop open, and a noxious gas begins mm -hmm. to emit out of the uh, the mouths of the toys and starts to fill the room. The store's full of COVID nineteen. You, <laughs> you finally notice. A, a small hourglass in the distance. The hourglass itself has about maybe one minute worth of sand. And uh, you uh, can tell that the glass begins pouring. What do you do? Oh, in real time. Fun, Frank. Oh, God. Thanks. Oh, good, thank you. Uh... Do you all look or no? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Allison Bree? Oh, great. Uh, Frank, oh, shit, you are no, still screen sharing, so I'm no. seeing it. <laughs> 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 what the heck? Oh, Guys, man, I missed oh, the. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. I don't know that I could begin to explain to our listeners what we just witnessed. <laughs> uh. Stupid screen sharing. <laughs> Phantom women on the screen share. Yeah.
Beleza.